Hello children, I am Pooja Singh and I welcome you all to this video on Geography Chapter 3, Mineral and Power Resources. Children, in the previous Geography Chapters, we have already learned about the meaning and types of resources. In this chapter, we would learn about the various mineral and power resources in detail. So let's begin with minerals first. Have a look at the subtopics that we would cover in this video. Types of minerals, distribution of minerals, uses of minerals, conservation of minerals. What are minerals? A naturally occurring substance that has a definite chemical composition is a mineral. Minerals are not evenly distributed over the earth's surface. They are concentrated in a particular area or rock formations. Some minerals are found in areas which are not easily accessible such as the Arctic Ocean bed and Antarctica. Let's see how are minerals formed. Minerals are formed in different types of geological environments under varying conditions. They are created by natural processes without any human interference. They can be identified on the basis of their physical properties such as color, density, hardness and chemical property such as solubility. Coming to the types of minerals, there are over 3000 different minerals. On the basis of composition, minerals are classified mainly as metallic and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals contain metal in raw form. Metals are hard substances that conduct heat and electricity and have a characteristic luster or shine. Iron ore, bauxite, manganese ore are some examples. Metallic minerals may be ferrous or non-ferrous. Ferrous minerals like iron ore, manganese, and chromites contain iron. A non-ferrous mineral does not contain iron but may contain some other metal such as gold, silver, copper or lead. Non-metallic minerals do not contain metals. Limestone, mica and gypsum are examples of such minerals. The mineral fuels like Coal and petroleum are also non-metallic minerals. Children, now have a look at the various processes through which minerals are extracted. Mining, drilling, quarrying. Mining is further classified into open cast mining and shaft mining. Mining. The process of taking out minerals from rocks buried under the earth's surface is called mining. Open cast mining. Minerals that lie at shallow depths are taken out by removing the surface layer. This is known as open cast mining. Shaft mining. Deep bores called shafts have to be made to reach mineral deposits that lie at great depths. This is called shaft mining. Drilling. Petroleum and natural gas occur 
far below the earth's surface deep wells are bored to take them out this is called drilling quarrying minerals that lie near the surface are simply dug out by the process known as quarrying now let's see how are minerals distributed across the various continents on earth asia china and india have large iron ore deposits the continent produces more than half of the world's tin china malaysia and indonesia are among the world's leading tin producers china also leads in production of lead antimony and tungsten asia also has deposits of manganese bauxite nickel zinc and copper europe europe is the leading producer of iron ore in the world the countries with large deposits of iron ore are russia ukraine sweden and france mineral deposits of copper lead zinc manganese and nickel are found in eastern europe and european russia north america the mineral deposits in north america are located in three zones the canadian region north of the great lakes the appalachian region and the mountain ranges of the west iron ore nickel gold uranium and copper are mined in the canadian shield region coal in the appalachian region western cordilleras have vast deposits of copper lead zinc gold and silver south america brazil is the largest producer of high grade iron ore in the world chile and peru are leading producers of copper brazil and bolivia are among the world's largest producers of tin south america also has large deposits of gold silver zinc chromium manganese bauxite mica platinum asbestos and diamond mineral oil is found in venezuela argentina chile peru and colombia africa africa is rich in mineral resources it is the world's largest producer of diamonds gold and platinum south africa zimbabwe and zaire produce a large portion of the world's gold the other minerals found in africa are copper iron ore chromium uranium cobalt and bauxite oil is found in nigeria libya and angola australia australia is the largest producer of bauxite in the world it is a leading producer of gold diamond iron ore tin and nickel it is also rich in copper lead zinc and manganese kalgoorlie and coolgardie areas of western australia have the largest deposits of gold antarctica the geology of antarctica is sufficiently well known to predict the existence of a variety of mineral deposits some probably large significant size of deposits of coal in the trans and antarctic mountains and iron near the prince charles mountains of east antarctica is forecasted iron ore gold silver and oil are also present in commercial quantities
Now coming to the uses of minerals. Children, minerals are very useful to humans. Minerals are used in many industries. Minerals which are used for gems are usually hard. These are then set in various styles for jewelry. Copper is another metal used in everything from coins to pipes. Silicon used in the computer industry is obtained from quartz. Aluminium obtained from its ore bauxite is used in automobiles and airplanes, bottling industry, buildings and even in kitchen cookware. Now coming to the last topic of this video, conservation of minerals. Children, as you all know that minerals are a non-renewable resource. It takes thousands of years for the formation and concentration of minerals. The rate of their formation is much smaller than the rate at which the humans consume these minerals. Thus, it is necessary to reduce wastage in the process of mining. Recycling of metals is another way in which the mineral resources can be conserved. That is all about minerals. In the next video on this chapter, we would learn about the various conventional and non-conventional power resources. Thank you.